We're starting our submarine board with this uh, foam insulation that we salvaged out of a dumpster construction site. Um, so Henry is using the hot wire cutter to cut through the foam. We're making uh, 36 inch lengths to uh, start our submarine table. All right, what are you working on there, Henry? Tell us. I'm uh, making the shore where like it leads into the water and you want to like have it like go kind of random because that's what beaches look like in real life. You don't just want to go like a straight like that. Yeah. And You're this kind of going just, in at an angle, right? Yeah, this will just give us like more, uh, what'd you call it? Uh, Definition to the yeah. edge. All right, we'll come back at you later. All right, while Henry is working on that, this is just uh, paint we pick up at the uh, um, sort of paint counter in home improvement stores that people have brought back. We just look for natural colors, $2 for this quart of paint. This can go a long way. We, we just look at natural colors like these couple over here, and we'll see what we can come up with just for a couple bucks. All right, now we're painting roads with this darker brown paint on here. Just kind of freehand, we'll straighten them up as we get it built in. And we're just kind of using the lines on the insulation to give us some um, guidance on that. So I don't really feel like a lot of people paint roads on their terrain. Yeah. And it's because uh, usually like they split up the uh, these like, cores and stuff. But um, usually they like have like these individual pieces, but we're doing it different. So just painting on some roads and we'll... Maybe we'll put a different color on the edges of them. All right, we'll be back in our next step. All right, we have our rock wall. Go ahead and take a look at that that we cut out. Um, we know the spray paint is gonna eat it up a little bit, but that's kind of the look we're going for. So we'll just kind of make some, try to keep the spray paint off the top, but we do want to kind of um, get into that a little bit. We'll come back and touch that up with the orange, the rusty orange, but uh, this will melt a little bit and actually give our rocks a little bit better look. All right, we have the rock wall on the edge of the foam done. Henry just kind of cut that out. Now we did spray paint that and spray painting does cause a lot of, uh, it will break down this foam, but that's kind of the look we were going for. And the spray paint kind of gave us a rough edge up here, okay? So if you're gonna spray paint foam, make sure you understand that uh, the spray eats it. Henry's over there rolling out part two. Our table is gonna be a little bit more than four foot wide, but uh, we'll see if we can deal with that at the shows and in the tournaments. It won't be much more and four feet wide, but we'll figure it out. All right, Henry, keep rolling it out. All right, we do have our submarine table rush job done. You can kind of see our rocky ledge right down through here. We're gonna put some sort of blue uh, watery um, fabric or whatever we can get in there. Submarine will sit in there. I'd like to get bridges for my two road spots and then maybe put some like uh floating docks down in the middle for uh only troops but if a tank or a wheeled vehicle wanted to get across the map they could on those spots probably going to go start looking for 3d prints on those because uh it's uh sunday night and we'd like to have this ready to go on saturday i'm um, thinking about what kind of stuff i can put on here to make this map interesting we have some terrain we can uh figure out what to do with, but we don't have a lot of bridges. So I'm off to the basement to start 3D printing. And this only took us about an hour and a half. I know it's not pretty by a lot of your standards, but uh, we think you can play on it after it dries up. All right, so we slapped this together after uh, everything dried up. We've got our water tower uh, factory. We'd like to get some paint on that roof. Just threw a little strip of railway in here with a crane car on it. Um, a bridge that I definitely need to get fixed up a little bit better. Um, 
that was a bridge I attempted to print to go across that far road down there, but I'm just kind of use that as a loading ramp or something like that. For now, we've got a little nest over here that maybe a couple troops can jump into if they want to defend that bridge. Our garage, which we've had for a long time, and a couple office buildings down on the end. Just want to kind of get closer to the submarine. It's not done. Um, definitely need to fill in that black on that section right there. I'd like to add some detail to the uh, sail. There's a little deck gun on here, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. I'm excited to maybe get this out and play some people on it. So we slapped this together in uh, just a couple days using some stuff we already had. The 3D print of the submarine took quite a long time. And I actually even sanded that down. If you really get in close, there's not many of the 3D print lines that you see on a lot of prints because I took a lot of time to sand this. I might put some uh, dulling spray on this to take some of the shine off of it, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. The paint on here is not even all the way dry. I'd like to definitely dress up the sail a little bit and maybe put some uh, weathering on some of this, especially these hatches right here. So we're not done, but we're probably ready to take it to a, um, an event that we have this weekend.